I'm called the bus lady. A self moniker, it started out, because if people can't remember my name, I said, well, if you say, Miss Bus Lady, I said, I'll answer. And I've been on all the routes, including parking rides, and I know where things are. So if somebody knows that they want to go somewhere, I can tell them how to get there. And it's stuck over the years. So that's me, the bus lady. I use the bus and the rail for every single thing that I do. I helped a lady uh, learning English, getting her children here from El Salvador, and I'd help her study on the bus. She worked two shifts sometimes. I, she napped, I woke her up. We're an extended family. I worked with young people at Rice University. I'm an alumna. I enjoy working with them because I'm learning new stuff, technology that we have to catch up on. Okay, but I said you need common sense and mother wit. Finding your way around. Everything isn't going to be on Google per se. Okay, so I love that interaction with with young people. These are our future, our future leaders. It's not about saving up to get a little used car or something. I said, yeah, I know how to drive. People have a misconception that you can't do any better. You have cooties or something. That's not true. You can get a job riding the bus. People have one guy said, oh, my secretary's going on maternity leave. I gotta. I said, oh, and then another the lady, she's sitting there, she's looking for a job, had her resume with her, bingo. There's all types of reasons to ride the bus, make new friends, learn about things. So I've ridden the bus all my life. I didn't grow up with a car. There was no car in the family. I didn't get a car until after college. But now everybody buys their kid a car when they're 16, and then you never hear from them again. Just buying a car in itself, there's the car note, there's the insurance, there's the inspection fees, all of these things that go into that. And it's like, even if you don't do it every day, just try it and you'll see how you get a whole different view of the city. Buildings you never noticed before that you go by every day. When I heard about this new endeavor, I wanted to be a part of it. You have to participate. You have to be in on the process of anything because at one time, there are a lot of routes being considered for total elimination, but you have to understand those neighborhoods, people are transit dependent. What are they going to do? How would they get to work? How will they get to school? You don't abdicate your power, your authority. Sometimes people don't understand that they need to empower themselves. I was on the stakeholder committee for a lo long time, two long years and you have your bucket list of things that you'd like to have, things you must have, and you have to work through these things. You don't let your taxpayer money be used for things that are not beneficial to you and your community. You speak up. You always offer solutions, too. You don't just rant rave after the fact. Well, this is how I would do it if I were doing it. How about considering this? You talk, you negotiate, you compromise, and you work to solutions, it's the main thing, solutions to issues. If you want to increase your ridership, what caused it to become so low to begin with? There may be something that your statistics won't show. Statistics don't show a lot of things. I actually made a little flyer that I passed out in my community of the new routing of our bus, because of course with change, it's like, oh, I can tell I'm not going to like this. It's like, no, look at this. Look at all these opportunities for grocery stores, okay, for shopping. There's a hospital on our route now. You can go from your house to Memorial Northwest Hospital if you need to, or work there. Job opportunities, major, major job opportunities, too. You want to get people out of their cars and mix, mix, mix. That's true in any city. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs>